All right, we got an Antonio. Minotaro, also known as not Diet Nog. Uh, Rodrigo Noguera, he is 33-7-1 versus Dave. Mr. Pee Wee Herman, he's 21-4. Noguera, 9% of his wins by KO, 61% by submission. Herman, 71% by KO, 24% by submission. Mm -hmm. Okay, my first question. How the fuck is Nog's shoulder if a frame mirror tore it off and put it on his mantle? Because I thought he was supposed to come back earlier for a yeah, but he different ready. fight. But he may have jumped training too soon. And mm, Sean Jordan, he was going to fight at UFC 149. I made a note about this. But he and pulled out because it just wasn't ready. Yeah, so uh, that's, that's my one concern. But, you know, fucking Herman has not had good success. And he has not looked impressive at all nope. in the UFC. I mean, his first fight was a uh, sloppy slobber knocker <laughs> against fucking Enemo, yep. and he happened to win. And then he had two other fights where, who else, Roy Nelson in there? Fuck if I know. Roy Nelson and uh, what Stefan, Stefan Struve, Struve, right? Yes. Yeah. So his big problem is going to see, like, cardio to me. I don't know. He always seems like he's almost in shape for about three minutes. It's he weird. might have the worst he cardio. Like he's in good shape, man. It's like... So, him in Brazil against Nog in Brazil. Remember, last time Nog fought in Brazil was against Brendan Schaub. And Didn't go so well. Knocked him the fuck out <laughs> in the first round early. Yes. So, I, I think Nogs is one of those <coughs> Brazilian fighters that's going to suck the energy in. Oh, yes. Through every orifice in his body and just deliver it right into Dave Herman. Via probably a submission is the safe bet. But I wouldn't be surprised if he knocks him out. Take that. You never mm -hmm. know. Yep. Herman Chin, questionable. Questionable. Yep. Taking that. Uh, how long is this going, you think? One. Now he's going to make quick work if his shoulder is up to par. Okay. Let's say you. Well, this is weird again. We maybe, we're, we're kind of agreeing one more time here. Uh, uh, I'm going to have to say that I, I think fight. that Noguera has better boxing, hands down. I think uh, the big question mark, like you said, is his hands shoulder. Hands down? Like when he has his pants down, he likes to box. Boxing is good when his pants are down. I, I feel like Noguera is one of those guys where he doesn't feel like he's he has a disadvantage anywhere. I mean, he's he, he's good boxer. He works well off his back. The ground is no problem if he goes against strong wrestlers. Mm -hmm. He doesn't mind being taken down because he's like gonna work for the sweep and he's gonna get to top and do some kind of funky shit and you know submit your ass. That's what he's gonna do or take a beating for three rounds and then make a miraculous comeback. Uh, I, f I feel like this goes at least two, okay. and um, I think the first round is going to be a little bit of testing out. I think, you know, Noguera maybe is going to see how he's doing, how things are going. And uh, I feel like Noguera finishes from the top via some type of submission. I want to say like a guillotine from the top. Whoa. You know what I mean? I hear you. Like one of Here's those. a weird question. What's a question? <laughs> how fucking wild would it be if Dave Herman was able to submit Big Nog in Brazil. Well, how fucking crazy would that be? I think you be? should do that and then run out of the cage <laughs> and go home right away. <laughs> because he's the one who always says that Jiu-Jitsu is magic, man. He doesn't believe in it, even though he has, you know, 24% of his wins by sub. Is it 24? Yeah. Oh. He's highly touted. He's a finisher. That's a well, solid 95% of his not wins. A, I remember, like, most of them are, like, from ground upon type style, right? Knockouts. So it's not like he's knocking guys out on the feet. Well, in, in, in the UFC, like, you're looking at another caliber of opponent from the other organization, so. Mm -hmm. It would be crazy. I, I mean, I don't, that would be weird. I, I think. Peruvian necktie. <laughs> <laughs> Can he pull off he something so exotic? I don't know. I, I think it's hard to say, I've yeah. talked around in circles with this with Comprito about yeah. the Noguera Frank Mir fight. About how is it possible that Mir was able to get Noguera in that position? And I think it was just a small tactical error. And I I have no faith that Herman has that much technical ability. I mean, Noguera is like the, the godfather right. of heavyweight jujitsu wizards. I mean, Stranger things that happen, mean I'm that his saying. career is over. I think Noguera retires if Dave Herman submits him. He <laughs> has to retire. Are you kidding me? Possibly. There's no way. Maybe I should just switch my pick and say Dave Herman. <laughs> Do it. Sure. Go ahead. But come on. What if his shoulder just falls out of socket and Dave just happens to grab it and touch no, it? No, Gary. Not tap. Said tap. No, Gary wouldn't tap. Well, well, he's got his arm off. He ripped his arm right off. He's like, just like grab a short and say, "Come on, <laughs> <laughs> I fight you." 
He just know, twists it. Know. He's a titty twister. It's interesting. It's an interesting just, matchup. Uh, this whole, I don't know. I it's think very he- heavily favored for the Brazilian fighters. Of course. I'm not saying they're fighting cans, but I'm just saying. Paul Nogueira, 34? Uh, 36. Yeah. Herman's 28. Yeah. So. Go ahead, Magic Eight Ball. Just fucking take Nogueira. I don't even know why I ask. I swear, oh. There's the eight ball gonna take Dave Herman. Ooh, no guy, you're gonna win. You are safe, sir. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> Maybe. 